Hi, my name's Elizabeth. I'm Justin. And this is Late Night Review. Tonight, we're gonna be reviewing some footage that I came across. I believe that it is actual, authentic video footage from the Roswell crash in 1947 of the UFO. And so we're gonna go ahead and play that for you tonight. Okay, so I put this one in slow motion. I slowed and paused it here to see like the figure a little better. Here you have all the military personnel running around. It looks like a pretty small mm -hmm. individual and then another body next to it, which looks slightly different from that beam. This was the damaged but recovered original fo uh, film, right? Yes. That's why it looks like it looks. Patchy. Patchy. And I just froze. You could see a little bit of the soldier and the surroundings. A little better shot of the head. Look, you can see how the hand moves when he the, this guy moves it. He shakes it. view of the legs. See the toes, they have six toes. Really high arches. Here, six fingers as well, six toes and six fingers. Creases in the legs. No sexual organs. No, yeah. There was a little better shot of the hand. So I came across some footage I was really excited about and wanted to just put up on the channel as is. But then I got to thinking, well, I don't want to just put that there. I need to do a little research on this to see. So I wasn't just like putting it there and then you guys were just left with like, oh, okay, here's just another clip. 
So I went through the process to try to figure out where this video clip came from and the places this thing took me. Oh my gosh, I it took me down a rabbit hole. From there, I went ahead and read a couple articles. I found a couple sources of where it came from. So upon looking for all this information, it also connected me to a movie that was made in Great Britain and the movie is called Alien Autopsy. Not not to be confused with the alien autopsy video or footage that was aired on the Fox Network here in America in 1995. And so when I was doing this research and I came across that it was connected to that, I was like, oh my gosh, yeah, the thing was so fake. Like this is definitely, this is really sad. This is, this isn't authentic footage. But then after doing my research, I came across a lot of information that actually answered why that footage from the 1995 broadcast was fake or why it was faked or how it was fake. This article is from space.com and here they have a picture of the footage and it says in 1940, this is the 1947 alien autopsy film frame and it's up for auction. This was in, um, this was written in May 28 by Mindy Weisberger. Sorry if I mispronounced your name. He says a picture is worth a thousand words, but a single frame of 16 millimeter film worth $1 million question mark. That's the opening bid for a negative frame of black and white movie footage from 1947, allegedly showing an extraterrestrial corpse on a medical examiner's table. So the guy who found it was the guy who came across this footage, his name was Ray Santilli. What it reads here. Where did this film come from? Rumors about a UFO in Roswell began to circulate in 1947 after a U.S. Army public information officer issued a press release describing a crash flying saucer. If you, you should know about that already. In 1995, a documentary that aired on Fox television under the title Alien Autopsy, Fact or Fiction, introduced TV viewers to footage of this alleged post-mortem of the UFO's extraterrestrial occupants, life science previously reported. Ray Santilli, a British record and film producer, owned the footage. Santilli said that he acquired the film in 1992 from a retired U.S. military cameraman during a search for archive footage for a documentary about Elvis Presley, according to the auction statement. Though Santilli argued that the film was genuine, skeptics disagree. Their suspicions were seemingly validated in 2006. It goes on to say that one of the people who were part of the recreation of this alien autopsy came out and said that it was faked and he was part of the, the group of people who faked that alien autopsy. So it goes on further and says, but this strange story has one more twist. It, it was also later on authenticated supposedly by a CIA scientist. Claims former CIA scientist Kit Green was briefed three different times during and after his tenure at CIA on topics relevant to UFOs and the Roswell incident alien autopsy. The memo believed to have been leaked from the archives of late astronaut Edgar Mitchell states after Kit left the CIA he was called into the Pentagon by a person in uniform. This person showed Kit the alien autopsy photos and reports etc. The photos of the alien cadaver Kit saw were consistent with the cadaver seen in the 1995 Santilli film video. The Sun reported in 2019, which is a British tabloid known for sensational stories. So I'm guessing it must be in comparison to what we have out here in the state, which is the National Enquirer. So setting this possible CIA agent claims aside, say that never even happened, just in case, you know, like we don't know if this person was really in the CIA or not. So, and based off of the footage I showed you here and then the information I could find, I just think out of all of the cover-up we have over the 1947 crash here in New Mexico and Roswell, this could just be something else that actually is proof of it that's just going to be or dismissed by most people because they're going to think this can't be real that's exactly what the government would probably want you to believe right that it's just it's not real it said that once the footage went up for auction it also had the site apparently crash because so many people are interested in buying this and that later on they're able to fix it and the article goes on so 
we went ahead and checked out this video, Alien Autopsy. Not to be confused with the Alien Autopsy in 1995. You remember watching it back then. Um, 95, I was like in sixth or seventh grade, but I remember it being a really big thing back then. So from there, I didn't want to put this clip on here for you guys and then just say, uh, according to this, the sun, they say it's a clip from this movie. And I didn't want to put it on there and say like, I don't know, go check it out and see for yourself. So he went ahead and bought it for us on Prime and we watched it and I thought it was a really good video or movie. It wasn't released here in the United States. It was a movie made in England uh, and Great Britain and released out there. And from what I read, it did pretty well. It was based on a true story and they made it into a comedy. Mm -hmm. And when I told you about that, you were a little hesitant, like how did they turn this documentary into a comedy? And I think they they did a pretty good job on it. I was a little like, uh, why would they make this into a comedy? But I mean, it, they, they did a really good job. Mm -hmm. I wish this would have been released into the theaters out here. Mm -hmm. But either way, you can watch it on Prime. Do you want to give a synopsis about the movie? The movie Alien Autopsy was creatively done to portray how it was that this ground shaking footage, if it's to be believed, to be authentic, how it made its way from film to the hands of the cameraman, to the hands of some Brit, mm -hmm. some almost 50 years later. Yeah. And then how it was subsequently released, but, but not the real video at first, mm -hmm. because the real video being 50 years old, um, had suffered had, had suffered some some integrity issues and it couldn't be played and they explain they explain why that that yes. happens and then how part of it was recovered but so the the main character of the the movie obtains he watches first this footage with the original cameraman who took it of the alien being looked at and then autopsied um, in 1947 after the Roswell crash. And then it, it, it goes forward to document how while this Brit couldn't release the real footage that he had seen and purchased for $30,000, he couldn't, he couldn't release that because it got damaged. But he had the idea, well, I know exactly what I saw and he believed obviously what he saw. Um, this was before Photoshop and everything. So he said, "Let's to his to his friend to and his partner. Let's make a recreation of it because then the world can see what we saw and we can make money on it." They did exactly that. They released footage that they actually filmed in modern day, which was in 1995 when yeah. they did this. Then they went ahead and released it to the world. It became a huge thing, a very huge thing. Round yeah, around the world. Around yeah. the world, people were looking to purchase the footage and everything like this. And then it ends up that after all this took place, part of the original true film um, was able to be recovered by a professional who was in the film industry in England and uh, what you just saw was that footage was the real footage part of it. Kodak authenticated that actual footage it was authentic circa 1940s of film. Of the course, actual film. The movie doesn't come out at the end and say this is real footage of a deceased alien that uh, was in a crash in Roswell, New Mexico in 1947. Obviously, the film's not going to come out and say that. The strongest claim they do make is that it can't be disqualified as authentic, which leaves it into the imagination and minds of the viewers to determine whether or not they think it's real or whether it is a fake. And that's where the film leaves it. They creatively turn what would be something fit for a documentary into a comedy of sorts mm -hmm. to tell the viewer how this took place. And so it's very entertaining to watch, which is important. Then at the end, they leave it kind of open-ended, but they do bring experts in to testify that the film itself, the physical film itself, and everything is consistent with that that time period the 1940s so at least that much can be said and what i thought was really intriguing to you about is they explain how this one cameraman ended up with yeah. this one uh that was reel of of film and apparently there was some um, i don't remember like three real reels of that exact eight. film eight there was eight they made eight copies oh. <laughs> yeah they made eight there was a copies. lot and then uh at, at so it went to multiple different places, what would become the CIA uh, and then uh, Office of Naval Intelligence and things of this nature. Before the intelligence community as we know it today existed, they had intelligence offices within the different branches of, of the military and et cetera, et cetera. That, that's not necessarily important. What is important is the significant change that took place between the end of World War II 
And be between that time and the Korean War, the intelligence community as the community as we know it started to come about. The Air Force came about. It used to be um, the Army Air Corps, things like this. So as, this, as it's recounted in the movie, at the time when this transition was taking place is when the crash happened at Roswell. The cameraman who was a military cameraman who was to film, be called up in a moment's notice, right. notice to film whatever it is that he was told to film, he was called up and went to Roswell Army Airfield and filmed what you just saw. Then copies were made and seven of them got distributed to wherever they needed to go. And then he was to hold on to the, the one he had and then it would and be... take it, it would, back to Florida with take, him. It, because then it would be picked up and... I assume he had top secret clearance and all that, so he was cleared to have that footage or whatever. But because of the strategic changes that were taking place at that time, it just never got picked up. It, yeah. He, he held on to it. He became lost in the mix. He became um, lost in the mix. And they didn't really, real, no one realized that there was still one real out there. Right. And he held it for all these years yeah. waiting for it because he's like, someone's going to come right. ask for it. And so he had it this whole time waiting for it to be picked up. Right. That's right. how it ends up in his hands. Which is incredibly interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. But it's a movie worth watching. Yeah, absolutely. I went ahead and put together a few frames of the 1995 autopsy of that alien. And I took frames out of the video that was at the beginning of our movie here and compared it so you could see the difference in the alien that Ray Santilli has come out and said yes that alien was fake as Justin just described on why it was fake and you can see the difference between that alien and the alien from the actual footage recovered. So there's two there's two videos. One is the authentic, very difficult to to see film which you just watched, which is the authentic film from 1947. And then then the next video that you'll see is the recreation of what was on, part of what was on that original film that we didn't get to see because it didn't make it through the process of being re put together after it was destroyed. So what you need to know is that what Ray Santilli originally saw was not only the footage that we just watched where they're looking at an alien on a stretcher on the ground, right. but then he also saw the autopsy right. of that alien. Right. Now, we don't get to see that, but he recreated what he saw in the film um, from memory, and that's what he originally released as the authentic, as the authentic film. Right which he later said was not authentic yeah. when the actual authentic film um, was able to be put put together in in pieces what you just saw again so we'll be comparing the false footage which he recreated in 95 with the authentic footage right. of what was was seen in what 47 was, was what was saved. recorded in 47 yeah and he also explains in the movie uh how it ends up getting damaged and why right. why there's only this short piece which you got to see uh, footage left from that whole whole reel. Right, and which is uh, essentially the elements. The elements, The elements yeah. got to it. And from the moment he got to see it, it was exposed. It was exposed for the first time in many years. And he didn't know any of this until he went to play it for his family yeah. and it wasn't playing. He then took it to an uh, actual company who works on restoring these films and that one company was able to recover just that short clip right. which you got to see. So that's where, why the uh, the whole entire reel is missing. Yeah. So. Um, of course. Yeah. Damn it. But I mean, something's better than nothing. Yeah, yeah, I'll take it. At least I'll the whole thing's it. not a recreation. <laughs> you get right. some authenticity right. of it. So uh, we hope you enjoyed that footage and uh, love to hear what you think about it in the comments. If you know any more information about it, please share. We'd really love to hear about it.
All right. Have a good night. Bye.